Welcome to Date with Dano right here on Hi TV, your luxury channel. Today is a very special show. We're talking about friendship, creativity, and also faith. All this and more on the show as we move on. Hi everybody, I'm Kirby Dilanrol. I'm the head of Wow Life Church. I'm a co-founder there, and I'm here with my friend Philip. Hi, I'm Philip. Uh, I'm an architect, and I'm happy to be here today. And we're here on a date with Danu once again. I'm hoping that Danu will uh, finish what he started last time, and that we can maybe go deeper, and that he will take off exactly where we stopped last time. Welcome to the show, and uh, you know these faces. Well, I'll start from the other side. I, I can't still believe that Philip is on the show, but I'm super happy that he's here. He, he's, he's so quiet normally. <laughs> so I'm really happy that he's here on the show. Then we have Auntie Nela. I'm going to call her Auntie Nela because that's how she's known by everyone. And of course, we have Kirby. Thank you for joining me on the show. Absolutely a pleasure to have you all. Thank you, Danu. So I have to start off with um, Auntie Nela's and Philip's friendship. Apparently, it dates way back in time. And uh, tell me, out of the two of you, who irritates who the most? I think he irritates <laughs> yeah, me. I, 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 I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I figured. <laughs> Especially on the group. <laughs> uh, so, now all of you are connected through creativity and also right. the, the creative freedom that you all have brought and sort of celebrated. But at the same time, spirituality also connects all of you. So, tell me about the friendship that you all have. Well, I met Philip way back in 1986 when I started architecture. Right. In my ripe old age. Mm -hmm. I was 37. Right. That's the same age Jeffrey Bava started his architecture. Um, and when I went into class, they were all young ones. Mm. And the only ma mature person I thought I found was in Philip. So we Right through eight years, we sat next to each other. Mm. That's how we started the friendship. He looked mature or was he mature? <laughs> uh, well, he looked mature uh. and I think he was mature. Right. For his age. Brilliant. Definitely. So, uh, Martin Ella said that you literally practically lived at her house most of the time. Yeah, that's because uh, I used to copy all her notes of her because <laughs> I never wrote anything down in class. So yeah. she'll yeah. say that. Because uh, I have to tell you. And of course, she had the best patties at home. Uh, <laughs> she makes the best patties, yeah. so that was a good enough excuse to yeah. get to her house. And uh, what happened was, he was pulled up one day mm. by uh, one of the lecturers. Mm. Said, Philip, why aren't you copying your notes? Mm. I mean, you've been just idling mm. and looking at everybody. He said, Madam, I bring my secretary with me <laughs> to copy the notes. <laughs> and that was That's me. You. <laughs> Beautiful handwriting. Uh, she writes word to word of everything what the lecturer That's amazing. Would say. This so, is a friend you yeah, need to have. She's very, very diligent. <laughs> and I, I used to get my mom to go into her house. We at one point, she refused to give me her notes. Oh. So I used to send my mom, in, mom into her house and say, get the notes and bring it back for me. So she was very kind enough. But she was very, yeah. she's a lovely lady. Can't say no to her. Lovely and she got lady. the fish patties then. <laughs> yeah. Um, now to you, Kirby. I have to ask you, y'all are getting ready for Iron Man That's once right, again. Yeah. And it's not an easy task. No, no. And what are no. you doing this time? No, this time I'm not doing the full one. Fiona is doing the full uh, right. 70.3, which mm. is the cycling and the running. And she just finished. Philip actually finished the uh, cycle ride maybe today of about 60 I kilometers know. and he's here. So even Philip is, uh, she, he's doing the cycling as usual. And then Fiona, Fiona, Melissa and a lot more will be doing the full Ironman. Okay. I'm just going to do the running. Now this Ironman, I know it's something that the world gets involved in. They all do it. But you have a very specific reason as to why you get everyone involved and, and like all of you do it as a community. And why is that? Yes. So uh, first I'll give you a theological uh, argument for right. it. <laughs> because uh, it's, it's so important that we are not just spirit. People focus on only the spirit when you get into church. Mm. And they don't focus on the mind, neither do, do they focus on the body. But God is so holistic. And so, I mean, if your spirit disappears you do, uh, without your body, mm. they call it death, right? So we like to make sure that the body temple is looked after, they eat the right types of food. And Iron Man is really interesting because they have all three types of sports in it. You have a cycle, you have a running, you have a swimmer. 
So at some parts of someone's life, they would have at, at least swum or run or cycle. So we try to get as many people involved with all types of age groups. We have, I think, I'm not sure who the oldest Philippines are. Uh, who's the I oldest? Raj, probably, right? Yeah, no, but on Iron Man? Iron Man. Iron Man? Mm. Was it? Uh, I think probably la last time was me, probably. Was it you? Or yeah. yeah. And uh, Ralph. And, and Ralph, Ralph and Lila part. Yeah, L Ralph and Lilani. Yeah, Lilani yeah. is younger than me. I think we have Johan. We have, uh, we have yeah, nearly oldest, eight or yeah. ten people over 50. Good, you found some. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he was, saying, he was like, oh my god, is it, well, is it just me exactly. now? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we, yeah, we got about 50, uh, over 50, maybe about yeah, 8 or yeah. 10 participants over 50. Yeah. Most of them doing the full Ironman. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And all three, that is. That's right, the run, the cycle, and swim. And this sort of, this, this also becomes something that it sort of proves to you that there are no limits in you. Yes, I think resilience is such an important subject, especially with COVID and what's happening in the world. And Sri Lanka going through such a rough and tough time. We like our community be, to be very resilient. And so um, we like to be able to train people to be strong and uh, having strong will to get what they, to be excellent, really. Amazing. Now, your father has played a huge part in your life and in influencing you into architecture. Tell me about him and his presence in your work. Strangely, Dano, although he, he has made a big impact yeah. in the architectural world in creating the institute, the archi architectural education yes. and the institute, um, he hasn't forced architecture on me, okay. never. I think, Philip, am I right or wrong? Yeah. He, was, uh, he didn't even bother to see what, we, what I was doing. Yeah. And but it was very embarrassing when I went into school. Mm. Like they used to like the lecturers used to come and acknowledge my presence. Mm. And I hated that. Yeah, you didn't want to be known as I his didn't daughter. want to yeah. be known. I mean, I mean, why should I I mean I had an identity. Yeah. And I didn't want to be known as so and so's daughter. And they used to say, you know, we are so pleased to have you in class. Mm. And you could, if there was a hole, I would have sort of buried myself. <laughs> but, uh, but your work, do you ever like sort of see anything close to what he might have vision? No. I, I, I'm, I not, I'm think so. Very different. To nail us. Uh, but I must say that he, he's been a great influence in a lot of our lives because he was one of those solid sort of pillars of our, the architectural mm. community. A uh, very well-rounded man, well-educated, well-traveled. Uh, was a great, I think, sportsman as well. Right? He used to dive off the high board at the SSC at the age of 85. I think, yes. You know? so a phenomenally oh. fit uh, man as well. So all around, he knew knew about uh, the fauna and flora of Sri Lanka. He knew about archaeology. So very well-rounded man he was. You know, yes. Amazing. So I wouldn't say that my style or anything was a take off from him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's amazing. Um, now, Philip, your dad was a pastor. Yeah. yeah. And how was home when you were growing up? How was home? I think that's a tricky question to <laughs> ask. But I think uh, I grew up in a very legalistic uh, household. Mm. When I say legalistic, it was ultra extreme in a sense. You know, like my sister wouldn't, was not allowed to wear jewelry or makeup. Uh, we were not listen, uh, allowed to listen to pop music, so... Uh, and you didn't celebrate so, any birthdays? No, that, no we were that not that not, extreme. Uh, okay. we, we did have birthdays, we did have holidays and other okay. celebrations. Uh, but I, I mean, obviously, like, things like, you know, you wouldn't even put alcohol in your Christmas cake. Oh. You know, so that's the kind of extreme background. But I, I think it also gave a certain sort of uh, sense of security. We, we still had everything that a middle-income sort of family would have, like mm. a, a very close family. But I think our family fell apart after my dad passed away at a very young age. I was just 10 years old. So everything changed. I think things change, right, when, when the head of the household yeah. is no longer around. Uh, but I think that also opened up a lot of new possibilities as well, because you, you learn to be, uh, you learn to thrive, you learn to be innovative in that kind of challenging situation. So you, uh, that's why probably Nela saw me being very mature at the age of 16, mm. because, because you, you, to... you grow up much faster yeah. uh, when you have to sort of, uh, uh, sort of navigate your own way through, yeah. which, is, which is also, I, I see that in a different way. And also know? the path that you chose was not something that your household was 
exposed to before. And Absolutely, like, yeah. not at all. I'm naturally, to tell you the story, my mom, who was a very spiritual woman, came one day just overnight and said, uh, God has shown me you're going to be an architect. I'm taking you out of school to apprentice and, and learn what architecture wow. is all about. And uh, that's how I, uh, to cut a long story short, Got into I this. applied into the, to the course and I had to sort of contend with uh, great uh, architects like Nela who are already oh in, the, in the profession. Uh, but yeah, that was the beginning of an amazing journey. Yeah. Great. We're getting into a break. When we do come back, I'm going to speak about how this friendship worked and how creative this man is when we do come back after this. Welcome back to the show. I have to ask um, Auntie Nela, you told me about a story how you got to know about Kirby once again from someone where you went to see a plot of land. That's right. Correct? Tell me about that story. Okay. <laughs> what happened was, <clears throat> I have been, I mean, Kirby, I have got to know, I got to know Kirby through Suni Nirmalingam. Right. When actually uh, Suni was uh, doing a lot of artwork yes. for me. And then when I was, uh, and she did a lot for the Ministry of, uh, one of the ministries which I did, uh, Ministry of Housing, I think, and Urban, urban Development, development and Housing. Yeah. Um, and um, then what happened was uh, she, when I got this commission to do the Ministry of Ports and Aviation in a beautiful, mm. the Custom House building, it's a old, magnificent building, which was completely gutted with, uh, you know, all the wrong materials. I mean, having done architectural conservation of monuments and sites, I knew from the, the, the type of, you know, the age of the building mm. that I would have Burma teak. Yeah. And they had put linoleum on the floor mm. and the, when we opened it up and it was Burma teak. And there were 15 foot ceilings. Wow. The roof height was, mm. you know, Floor to ceiling height was 15 feet. So I exposed all that. Then what happened was I asked Suni, come in. Mm. And this, she said, look, do you expect me to climb 15 feet? I will give you someone who will do something for you. Mm. And that was Kirby. Right. So Kirby, this was about, the, I think, soon after the turn of the century. And Kirby did some absolutely stunning work. Mm. Absolutely stunning. I don't think I have ever met someone as creative as Kirby is. Whether it's creativity in art or whatever it is. I mean, whatever he does is he pours out in creativity. Now, this, but you reconnected with him in 2016. Yeah. That's right. And that yeah. happened when you went, went and... to see a site. Mm. And what happened was, That's I met... Story, yeah. Yes, that was very strange. I wanted to... Uh, this site was a sloping site uh, uh, opening up onto the Diyamana Oil. Mm. And then I told the client, look, I don't know whether there's high tide, low tide, whether there, you, you know, what the what the water would do yeah and I would like to talk to a neighbor mm. he said oh this guy is a pilot mm. so why don't you go and speak to him why don't we talk to him I know him so I rang the bell I found a cross outside outside his door mm. normally people do I think Christians hang crosses yeah. inside yeah. Isn't it? Am I? Uh, Philip so and I thought it was very strange and then uh, he came out, and a thirty gentleman, mm. Scott, mm. and uh, I was talking to him, asked him all about the site, and then uh, once the conversation was over, I said, "You seem to be a devout Christian." Mm. Then he said, "Why? You are asking me this question because I'm a Muslim." Mm. I said, "God, I didn't realize it's that you that were, you were yeah. a, uh, a Muslim." Then he, for some reason, unknown reason, he came out with his life history. Mm. You know, everything, what happened to him. And then he threw names like Kirby, mm. Delano Roll, and then Philip. Philip. <laughs> and he said, Kirby is a person who put me on, 
You see, I was, I was like a mad man. And he really kind of, you know, cured me. Mm. Whatever I had, you know, the phobias, whatever, in the mental problems I had, he, you know, completely, you know, resolved. And my now problems. you are thinking about the same name who did this 15 feet high yeah. building. So <laughs> then what happened was, then I said, excuse me, Captain, I think I know both these names. Then he also mentioned Phillips. And he said, you know, Philip just manifests money. This might be getting you trouble. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of Philip. So, yeah. so then what happened was, Danu, I turned around and said, look, I think both these names, Kirby and Philip. Philip, I think I know them better than you. <laughs> so that's how... You reconnected. Yeah, I, I reconnected. Well, that's then amazing. I called um, yeah, uh, Kirby yeah, and called. said, but Kirby, what is this magic yeah. you want me? <laughs> so by this time, see, Auntie Nela didn't have a background, so we uh, lost communication for some time. Yeah. Like she said... Uh, so uh, was it the same Kirby who she met in early 2000s? Yeah, 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 now see what, now see what, see what happened was, see, Auntie Nela didn't say, so when you go to Nela's office, you do as you're told. <laughs> if you knew Nela, now Auntie Nela is like... She's much, much more toned down. We than, had yeah. a WhatsApp group. Yes. In that, I knew I have to do as I'm told. I was like, absolutely. she is put together just well. <laughs> absolutely. So, you know, at that point when uh, I was recommended to Auntie Nela, you know, she wanted something done. And uh, when you go into that office, it was the grandest office you can imagine. Mm. She had her dogs in the office. Uh. She would uh, she'd be wearing this white, uh, her, she was full white with these massive uh, mm. neck, uh, necklaces, uh. you know, colorful. And very, very grand. And, and uh, we have a dog. She used to oh. have a dog walking around the office. And so when you got there, she was in charge. And she needed something done. And um, so for me, it was as much as I'd worked. Uh, so my background, my uh, foundation, Danu, is in, uh, in art and design, you mm. know, art history and design. And it was in Berkshire College of Art and Design. So my foundation and my advanced diploma. So uh, graphic design and stuff like that is what I love to do. It is a passion. And uh, so when I heard I'd be working with her, it was, I was quite chuffed and, and I know how creative she was. I'd seen some of her houses mm. and uh, I was like, wow, this is amazing. And actually I learned uh, quite a lot and actually my color scheme completely changed as you can imagine, uh, <laughs> and, uh, completely changed. And uh, she, I mean, we did some fantastic work really for uh, the ministry at the time. Absolutely, yeah. it's stunning. It's still hanging, it's still, there. Mm. still there, but of course they have put some awful partitions and things like that. <laughs> sure. I mean, I went recently mm. because I wanted to re-photograph because Kirby has lost the, the original, the original. So I wanted to photograph. I took Prishan and went. Oh, okay. But we, uh, done quite, after that, we did uh, other work as well. It mm. wasn't, so it wasn't a one time. But uh, to just to conclude the story, it was after that, um, I was at that point of time, I knew the Lord and I was doing what I was doing. You know, I, we're, not, we're not very evangelical. Mm. You, you, I won't go t into a, a job like that to do an artwork and try to evangelize. So that's Correct. not professional for me. You know, so, uh, so she left not knowing really who Kirby was and his spiritual background at that point. Right, time. that's yeah. amazing. All right, I think it was meant to be for you all to reconnect and absolutely, that's how it happened. Absolutely, absolutely. We're getting into a break. When we do come back, I really want to speak about, um, you know, something that, <laughs> Tinia, is it? Philip just manifests money. <laughs> so let's speak about this um, little secret when we do come back. This is right. So as always, now we did a show some time ago on the stories that came around uh, these new churches and especially about WOW and we had Kirby and Fiona speaking about it. Now on this line, I wanted to ask you, there's always a little mutter that continues. Um, tell me about this particular manifesting money. Yeah. It, has been, it has been a story and it has been for some time. Um, and, and everyone tends to paint all, yeah. anyone from this kind of a community with the same brush. So yeah, everyone is there. So tell me about it and what, the, what she said, what is the true meaning of that? Okay, good. Yeah, uh, just um, very simply, when you say manifesting money, I just want uh, anyone watching me to know, we are. Uh, I do not preach the prosperity gospel. So that's how 
They said, this is the prosperity gospel. We actually teach that people have to be excellent at what they do. We teach people to be uh, really trained, disciplined. Uh, we love people who work. 60% of our uh, internationally and here are professionals. So with this manifesting without la with laziness and just <laughs> being able to just be rich kind of yeah. thing is what they call the prosperity gospel. Uh, name it, uh, claim it, I have faith that I'm going to be rich. I don't need to. Uh, it's, it's actually an injustice, isn't it? To think like a person who's going to work their butt off and then someone goes and prays to Jesus and then suddenly, uh, bang, he's become a rich guy. You know, that's, that is not what we preach. We actually believe in work and uh, the Bible says a laborer is worth their wages. So, uh, so Danu, uh, we do believe in the supernatural law. We do believe that favor comes from God. We do believe that if you put your diligence and your training and your discipline into something, that God honors you just like man honors you. And so, of course, there are uh, tremendous stories. Philip will tell you stories of how he'll go somewhere and he'll meet the right person for the job. Just like Auntie Nella told you the story about how we met, you know. So we do believe in supernatural encounters and synchronicities happening, but uh, that doesn't mean that we believe that um, God is going to just make us rich just because you believe in Jesus or come to church. Hmm. And this could be a, a practice that we have in everyday life, whatever religion you're from. Sometimes we always say, oh, this person, I think, I don't know how this happened, but we just gel so well and we're able yes. to do something. So different terms could be yes. used, but it's the same thing that is yes. happening. But that doesn't mean, I'm also saying, that doesn't mean that in the Old Testament, there was manifestations of money. There, were many, uh, uh, there was an increase from, of wine and oil and all this. I wish there was an increase of wine uh, <laughs> in, in, in today's world. But, but, but the fact of the matter is there are those supernatural encounters. And I'm, Philip I mean, will attest to supernatural manifestations financially. But we are not dependent on those things hmm. to make us money. And these those are, are just the, nice signs. Yeah, these are the rewards for great work. Yes, and they're little small signs. You know, I do, you know, there's funny things, that, those weird things that people say, those phone charging, and those money little manifestations. We are not trying to manifest the money that we're going to live on that money. They're hmm. just little teeny weeny signs, silly little signs that make us feel like, wow, God is with me. You know? Yeah. I think just to add to that, yeah. just to clarify this as well, I think first and foremost, we are not a church that is completely founded just on signs and wonders. Yeah. These are just signs and wonders that lead us into a deeper relationship with God to study the Word of God. Right? A, a classic example is I have a friend of mine, she's Buddhist. She came for one of our meetings and, and saw the gold dust on her hands. But that was just a sign that made her feel so loved. She was going through a traumatic period in her life. And that just made her feel so loved. Wow, there's a God who really loves me so much. And now she's a solid believer. She studies the Bible, she prays, she comes to church. She's not coming every day expecting all kinds of fancy signs and wonders. So in the same way, the money is just a sign that just it's so just a sign from God. As Kirby said, you know, I run a very diligent business. You know, we are all about serving our clients well, uh, you know, forecasting our finances, planning our finances, uh, marketing ourselves, all of that. So really we, what this, what the particular gentleman meant by also, yes, we do have supernatural miracles, but we also live in a culture, Danu, in our culture at Wow Life Church, uh, we are very extravagant with our money because we are not scared of money if you get ready it's the only church i can tell you honestly that the pastor and his wife pays for the dinner bill when we go out mm. right most other churches everybody else would try to pay mm. right and and uh, you know we live in a in a flow mm. you know nobody's clinging on to their money so that's why people will give people might receive some people may not have at a particular time of their life then others will give so it's a flow that you know money just flows around right. because really money is not really important to us. It is we, we take note of it as a, as a powerful thing that we need in our day-to-day -day lives. But one of the, uh, and I can and we'll quickly share a few stories because yeah. it's important. Uh, you know, one of the things I can, uh, Kirby will tell you that I was not appointed as a leader for the longest time ever at the church because I was contributing a lot of finances. And Kirby said, if I make you a leader in the church right now, you will think that you're being made a leader because of the finances mm. that you're giving. And for, uh, for many years, I was not a leader, right? So that's the kind of leadership that we are in. And another story, I remember when, you know, sometimes, you know, when you're a maturing 
Christian, you go through little bits of offenses here and there. Mm. And at, at one point, I gave a significantly large amount of money to the church. And Kirby told me this amazing but very wise thing. He said, Philip, I'd rather first have your heart. You need to get your heart in order and in alignment with the church and with God. And then let me take your finances for the church. Uh, so, and lastly, uh, lastly, uh, you know, I, I, I saw with my very own eyes, there was a, a particular person who we had prayed for, and they had a great breakthrough in their life, and they brought a massive amount of finances and laid it at the church and to Kirby and Finn to, to put up a church building. But Kirby said they prayed about it, they sought God's wisdom, and they said, no, I'm, we're sorry, we're not going to. It was a massive amount of money that could have really built us a big building, a massive auditorium, and all of that. But uh, Kabi said, no, I don't think uh, we should be taking this money, and he, he refused it. You know, so, so that's why people can miss out. In the same way, we, we have no problem in buying the best shoes or the best clothes, because we also know how much of our finances go out there mm. to help, help the pastors. We have so many other community-related projects that are funded. You know, so it, uh, it's, it's that flow that we are talking about because you'll, you'll find that people who are actually talking about feeding the orphans or, or saving Africa and trying to be very frugal with their money are really still in that poverty state. Mm. But when you're in this flow, I think as much as we might spend on buying certain things, we give way more as well, but we don't talk about it. Yeah. Right? We, are, we are just in that flow. Now, I must ask you, although you buy all, it's all black, right? Sorry? Wh wh what is the other color you have apart from black? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, black is a color. But, <laughs> that he does, but he actually does. Yeah. You, have, you have to meet him a little yes. later on in the night. Light <laughs> black. <Yeah. laughs> no, actually, you know, actually, that's one of, the, one of the things that Wow Life Church broke in me is that, you know, I really started dressing in different other colors. Wow, and, really? And in, he's got all the colors. Yeah and, yeah, and of course in bling and all kinds of well, stuff. Sequins, you know, yeah. Because uh, I spoke to one of your very good friends, yeah. Shivanta. He said, I can go shopping with that man. He'll buy black, 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 and head to toe black. <laughs> okay, and you <laughs> invite him for a breakfast, he's in black. Yeah. You invite him for lunch, he's in black. He said, but he'll dress appropriate, but in black. <laughs> yeah, but but that's, that has changed. Yeah. 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 yeah, now we see some color on yeah. it. <laughs> Brilliant, excellent. We're getting to a little segment. We don't have a lot of segments on the show, but I wanted to play this one. It's called Yes or No. We have a few simple questions. If you feel like you need to explain the answer, which is either yes or no, you can do so. Here we go. Do you think you can make a good first impression? <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Can be a bit grampus looking at times. <laughs> agree. But I must say, I, don't agree at all. Uh, I, don't I must agree. say, I, I first met you in 2006. Yeah. That's yeah, right. from there to now, it's a total different Philip. Yeah. Yeah. I, of course, see, although you're wearing black, I can see rainbows and yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> like clouds floating all over you. Uh, do you try to be like everyone else just to fit in? Can you hold a dark secret for someone close to you? Do you believe in. No, we spoke about that. I can't. Do you struggle with your confidence? Oh. <laughs> Can science explain everything? No. Do you think our individual actions impact the world around us? Yes. Have you ever done something that you regret? No. Do you trust people easily? Do you think bad things happen to good people? That was cool. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. There's no words. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Yes. Well, I think all of you will. But how did, how did he, he, I think Kirby and I were synchronizing and he was different. Only twice. <laughs> <laughs> only twice. Only twice. Yeah, <laughs> only twice. <laughs> Uh, let's get into a break. We'll see you on the other side. Do stick around. This is Date with Dan.
Welcome back to the show. I have to speak about one thing now. There are different projects that take place. Uh, there is a project I'm told called Wow One. Yes, Wow One, yes. I got it right. I was going to That's say right, one wow. <laughs> yeah. uh, what is that about? And if this is helping communities and can everyone be a part of it? Yes, wow one is literally helping the youth. And uh, we realized a couple of months ago, re literally that the youth, they're all leaving the country because of the financial crisis. They're thinking that if they go abroad, maybe the grass is greener on the other side. But uh, some people don't really get to go. It's just cold. Yes, yeah. cold, absolutely. <laughs> yes. absolutely. And they, it doesn't even pay so well anymore. You yeah. know? So uh, Wow One is a project that we uh, want to make sure that, that they can dream again. So um, it's, we, it's, uh, we uh, teach them skills. It's, uh, there's a workshop on mental health, uh, also getting them out of addictions, because all the kids, even today, if you look at uh, the situation in schools, they're all on ice and you know, you know, people don't have the solutions for our, our, our next generation. So Philip and I and the leadership have looked at how do we actually uh, give the youth uh, hope again and mm. so it's to do with that and it, there is a business aspect that comes in that we actually train the youth and we actually uh, will start employing them as well so mm. that's the aspect of our one it's we have about 5,000 youth in Gampa alone with our churches these are our own youth from our churches and so our one has already now started and we have international um, professionals coming in on a monthly basis, training them to get out of addictions, mental health issues. So they're all professionals, psychologists, behavioral therapists that come down. And so that's our focus, and it's really our, our pet project at this season. Uh, and that's our one. And I think there's some videos as well if you can share. That's be amazing. Great. Yeah. I will ha happily do so. Thank you. Uh, we have a few members in the audience who are also watching this show live today. Sure. Uh, Quite a boring set, I'm telling you. Sure. <laughs> the applause <laughs> have not been quite consistent. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, but um, Auntie Nela, now this style that you have, this very signature look of yours, uh, how did it sort of, it, did it gradually sort of build its way up to where it is right now? You mean architectural style? No, your style. My your style. personal style. Well, a lot of influence. I think architecture is people have seen it, touched it and experienced yeah. it. But you, I have to ask this question. Now well, you have a bag that goes with it, yeah. and you have the, by the way, my coordinator has not allowed this bag to be here today, so <laughs> we have just had the fan. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but I think I have sort of developed it myself, mm. but I have been influenced by, you know, people like Padma Maharaja, my friend, and also Ranjani Vijayawardena, mm. Auntie Ina, yeah. mm. Auntie Ina in a big way, I mean, to do something outrageous yeah. all the time. So, I mean, sari, wearing sari, and uh, we're doing various things has been a lot of influence from Rajini Vijayawad, I have to say, and Padma. And uh, yes, Ina, to mm. do all the outrageous yeah. things. <laughs> Amazing. Flamboyant, Flamboyant things, and also Keith is with Of course. And people like uh, designers, such as that. Now, when you found the WOW community and when you became a part of it, what were you, what was your thoughts on it before? And how were you, how were you close to your faith at that time? I didn't know anything about WOW. <laughs> I mean, I just called Kirby and asked him what this magic was that yeah. he had done on this guy. Yeah, but then when you went there, you experienced it. I experienced it. I saw some, uh, it's unbelievable peace, peace of mind. I never looked back. It, I know that the date was, I think, 6th of January, 2016. I never looked back. I never, I mean, I didn't miss a wow no, session. She doesn't unless, miss one meeting. Unless, unless there was, I'm, I'm overseas or something like that, or I'm really sick. But uh, I mean, it has been, I mean, I'm never, I mean, it, I mean, it, it gives me spiritual, uh, some comfort, hmm. absolute comfort. And which, that has led, to you being someone who is now into healing? Yes. I think uh, as much as Philip has the knack of 
making money. I mean, he works very hard. I mean, I don't think he manifests the money <laughs> as such. Yeah. But he works very hard. But the point is, I think I have got the gift from God to heal people. Mm. I mean, so I know separate... The desire and the passion. So, yeah. if, you know, it's, it's, it's just, a, it's really a passion, isn't it? If I say, Auntie Nair, someone is sick, she's the first one to say, I'm going to pray. Mm. You know, and of course, she's very bold. So, from one side of the room onto the other side of the room, she'll go to that person and lay hands, mm. which, uh, which our church, we encourage, we believe that everyone has a gift from God and that they have to exploit and each, Find it. every single person has, has a gift from God in that aspect. And so Auntie Nela loves to lay hands. She has such a desire. Uh, I tell her to pray for so many people who are sick and I mean, she has some fabulous results as well. So, in fact, I mean, the last was Kirby prayed on me mm. and it was unbelievable. I couldn't walk. I couldn't take a step. I, 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 what happened was I went marketing after the gym and my shoelace came out. I was too lazy to bend down and tight. Mm. I tripped on it twice and I broke the fall. And that, I, I knew I had a slip disc as a, as a day went by. And I went to Kirby because I had to give him something. And I wanted to say, look, I cannot come for, on Sunday to church. So therefore I brought this. He just laid his hands on me and it didn't ha happen instantly. But one day later, I didn't know where the pain had gone. Mm. Now, in midst of work that you do with all of these things, that it's also a challenging um, brand name to carry because a lot of people have a lot of opinions. I have these hurt you in life? Philip, have people been personal about the fact that you're part of the WOW Church? Not, not really, Dan. I think uh, when you stand bold and they know that you're, A, they know, they know who you are, right? They know I that you're not, say this. you're not going to be... Sorry? When you stand bold and bald. <laughs> <laughs> I had to say that. True. <laughs> but I think you know, people know that you know, I'm a professional, I'm not frivolous, I'm not just going to get carried away. So when, when I stand by something, and I subscribe to something and I've committed my whole life to something, they know that I'm serious about it. So uh, I think even though I mean, people may want to say things behind my back, but definitely not in, to in company, people have not, people have asked me questions from a place of curiosity mm. and that I like. Yeah. I like people who are curious and who will actually ask me questions. There, are, there have been vociferous critics of WOW who are some of my friends who actually come along with me and sat and then been convinced and gone away having, ch having their minds changed. Mm. So really, I don't think it has affected my work in any way as such. Neither has it affected my social life or me being out there in the community. Not at all. I mean, at least I don't, I don't sense it or, or feel it. Mm. Anyway. Right. And uh, you, you are always been a reserved person or yeah. limited in words. Is that how you were always? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, no. I don't think yeah, he's I, ever, I think, ever limited uh, in words. I mean, no. in a sense, I, I mean, I would, I would say my friends might disagree that I'm, a, I'm yeah. quite an introvert. Right? You're guarded. I, yes. Uh, yeah, I like, I like spending time on my own. Right. You know, I'm, I, I mean, I, she, you know, she will tell you, I yeah. travel the world and go on holiday on my own. Right. Uh, even though some of my friends don't believe that I travel alone, they always think there's somebody in, <laughs> uh, in my luggage. But I think, uh, so I, I like my own company in, in, in many ways, you know. But also being a creative person, I think that's Absolutely. the time I get to, to get yeah. you know, when you're Ideas. creative, you really need Absolutely. a lot of time for yourself, you know, that's true. to be able to dream of what you want to design or... Amazing. Yeah. All right, we're getting into a break. So much to ask when we do come back properly. Welcome back to the show. We are in conversation with Philip, Antinela and Kirby. Now, I have to speak about this word, oh, I'm an architect. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, true. But uh, sometimes we sort of get confused with an interior designer or somebody who can uh, maybe give you a s the ones who can't give you the structural guidance. Now that is a key part of it. Can you tell me? I, I, there are so many now in the market, and it's a great thing, and it's a gr it's a it's a business that is actually growing, and a lot of people are coming into it. Um, how? Like, do people get confused? Like, sometimes they ask a designer to come and build a structure. 
how far is that safe? You mean an interior designer to yeah. build a structure? Like at least to draw something and give, and then they can get their basune to do it. I don't think that's a good idea at all, Danu, because they are not trained that way. I mean, the other way, an architect can doing interior is possible. Yeah, it's doable. I call myself an artist architect because yeah. I had about many, many years at the Melbourne Art School. And I you have vision the, how the building will be inside yes, and out. Yes, yeah. that's how my color sense came. Because I first studied under, you know, at Sakura Abrahams, I, was, I studied under Lucky Sen and I, mm. and Anil Gamini Jayasuri, that is Ina's son. And there was another person called Nara Singham. And, you know, they were all very, very, very vibrant people. Mm. So, I mean, my painting and sculpture would be the prelude to architecture. Mm which led me to my own style of creating. But I must say the others have been a great influence, like Jeffrey Bava, Spaces. Mm. I mean, I just adore I mean, his work. And I still appreciate it. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I do appreciate that, and I adore his work. And uh, things like that. But I wouldn't say an uh, interior designer can, should be able to do a structure, no. Right. My answer is absolutely no. I should and remove the kitchen counter at my yes. house. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Nela is right, but there are some exceptions. If you take Lucky Senanayaka, he was not a fully trained, qualified architect, but he did some phenomenal buildings. I think in a sense, not being in that sort of very constricted way of thinking as an architect gave him the freedom to do some of the most amazing hmm. structures that he did. Uh, Jeffrey Bava himself was actually a lawyer who was doing beautiful gardens and amazing things for friends. Mm. And then his friends actually encouraged him at much later in life, in his 50s, to go, or in, in his late 40s, 30, to go to... Uh, 37. Uh, 37, was it? Okay. To go exactly. into architecture school. So there are people who are, who are amazingly creative and then they just needed the qualification to just to do it and yeah. and even in sri lanka i think there are there are lots of people who are not really qualified architects or interior designers what you need is actually a structural engineer mm. you know so that when you're knocking a wall off yeah. or removing a you column know that the whole thing yeah, is so what Nela, <laughs> i think he's trying to say is yes that the, the, the trained thinking of an architect or an interior designer is important but there are certain gifted individuals who may not have the qualifications who um, are able to really produce some phenomenal mm. buildings and uh, really? creations, you know? I would like to clarify that people like Lucky Senanayaka has been working with Jeffrey Baba for years. Mm. So he has, the, mm. he has the engineers and everybody yeah. with him to, to be sort of able support you know, his to vision. support. Yeah. So uh, he knows to, when to go to an engineer. Correct. Or when to go to whoever it is. Yeah, I think you need needs. some basic you need sort basic. of understanding. But there are there are people who are you know I think I think it's good to get people. What we need to try to avoid is sort of like in the medical profession what we would call quacks, you know, mm. yeah. who then call themselves architects and then bring disrepute to the actually the qualified actually, architects who yeah. are and also you know, the ones who are born with the talent exactly to yeah. do something. Yeah. Um, now, I know this is a show about friendship and the fact that you all have all connected on the grounds of spirituality and art and creativity. But this question I had to ask, uh, because, you know, after we did the show last time, I think it, it, it went all over sure. and, and we had some good feedback. And I think we, uh, and you answered some of the questions that have been put across. Sure. One of the questions is the fact that, you know, money tends to play such a major role in this. And you, uh, and you were telling me something. When you took to make WOW your full-time thing, uh, you had to make sacrifices and you invested your, yes. even your finances into it. Yes. Uh, tell me, like, how have you tried... Like, do you feel like it should be explained? Do people understand? Yeah, yeah that's, uh, yes, I think it's a very important thing, Dano. First, first thing is, uh, as you can see, we've got brilliant people with us. And uh, the whole of our 60, 70% of our locally or 80% are all professionals. Mm. So Fiona and I are very invested in actually being, like, uh, like Philip said, you have to be professional in what you do. So we um, invest heavily in our education. 
if you know, it's at the moment at Fuller Seminary doing her master's. I'm completing uh, my neuroscience master's at King's College and also at UPenn uh, doing positive psychology uh, there. So we are invested in meeting professional needs. Mm. Now, I'm fully uh, co uh, high coach certified, that is uh, from Flow Research Collective. Stephen Kotler, I don't know what you've heard of him. Uh, he's a neuroscientist and he, they actually train people to um, step into a place called Flow, which is um, how, um, how, how humanity can be optimized. Right. Now, this is, this is a certification that you and I both have. And uh, we love to train professionals how to grow their companies. Yes, we invest our finances uh, into WOW. We support uh, WOW with our own companies. We have companies in Sri Lanka, in Dubai, in the USA. Uh, and we also have a church in the USA, which is a 501c3, that is fully fledged 500 uh, coach groups across the globe. So we do finance WOW from our companies. Our, we are in the commodity business, uh, in the energy business, many other businesses that we are involved with. I also have something called our uh, wellness products, our media company. So. Now, why I explain that we are professionals is because this is confused, okay? Oh. They think I'm selling my theology. My theology is never sold. My theology is free of charge. You can come to WOW. You can get it on YouTube. It's all free. But my professionalism is sold, and that's, that's a, a way of income for us and the church, and we spend it on the church. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, we have something called Christian Mystery School uh, that has a 1,000 students in Christian Mystery School. Uh, uh, if you are outside of the coach groups, you pay $4,000 uh, to get in there. Oh. Uh, otherwise, it's about $200, $100, $50 a month for different categories. So that is income that comes, and we finance our church with that. And actually, I shouldn't. That money should be, it's my royalty oh. because of my professionalism to be able to, uh, I should be able to enjoy the money oh. without investing in the church. But I tell people like Philip and all the business people that we have at church, I said, if you are giving, I like to give the same amount. Like if you give a million rupees, I need to be able to match that. And so Fiona and I focus a lot on our work and our business so that we can, this is what we love to do. We love being there for people and coaching people, training them to be excellent really. Um, many churches focus on uh, the broken part of people's tears. And they, they, uh, I am also trauma informed. I'm studying uh, mental health, psychology and neuroscience. So I'm trauma informed but we focus on the part of their dreams. So it's different. It's not just giving a shoulder cry on, cry on, but it says, what are you dreaming of? Mm. How do we build you? And we have to be fully equipped to do that. And that's um, our heart in how we do ministry. Amazing. Well, before we wrap things up, uh, Philip, I'm so happy that you were on the show. Thank you for coming. And I know you peddled like all the way to like Jaffna or something and came mm. back. Number one, I really want to know how strong is your buttock? <laughs> <laughs> to pull through that and come and sit here as well. Uh, thank you so very much for being here and thank thanks for being so open and uh, so easy to talk to. Auntie Nela, I know you appreciate the smallest things when you see someone well put together, you'll always sit there and tell, oh, I really like this and thank you so very much for being here and for being you and I really loved your personality, attention to details, the things that you look into before you come somewhere, amazing. And on time Thank is you. on time Thank for Nera. There is no uh, take two on the timing. <laughs> and uh, Kirby, you. thank you so very much. Yeah, I know you came you. to celebrate friendship. And, and also, yeah. uh, it's really sweet that you made time to come. I know that you all had to change plans around, but really appreciate Thank it. You. All right. On that note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you so very much for tuning in and being a part of Date with Danu. We'll see you again. Uh, see you again. But before we go, audience, thank you so very much. Can we have a live round of applause? There you go. It was not in my head. I actually had audience. We will see you soon. Till then, keep smiling. It's a wrap.